Hi guys, welcome to MedLab Hive. My name is Kum Nanchu. If you're a new subscriber, you're welcome on board. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you for always, always stopping by. I don't take your presence for granted. So before we continue, I would like to address something about our explainer videos. So it's been on hold for a while now and that's because school has been on break from my end. So when school resumes, we'll continue with that. Thank you to those who asked. So yes. If you're new here, please do well to subscribe to our channel. I mean, it wouldn't take so much and it's another way of saying you like what we do and it's a way of helping us grow. Do well to like, share, subscribe, leave a comment so that we'll know that you're new in the building and then turn on the notification bell if you haven't. Today we'll be discussing the three P's to effective studying. I mean, these are not abstracts. Tips. They are feasible strategies that I've been able to put in place and they've worked for me. They've also worked for other persons. So I thought it's, it's wise and it will be helpful to we as students. I'll be putting it out here. The first P we'll be talking about is purpose. That is your why. Purpose has to do with setting clear goals and objectives as to what you want to achieve from studying. What do I want to learn? How many topics or courses do I want to cover within this particular time range? How many hours am I going to spend? You know, if you set this thing out rightly, it's going to help you to streamline your efforts towards achieving that particular goal in studying. It also helps to keep you focused and on your toes and then it helps to minimize distractions and procrastination. It's very easy for us to get distracted and then you procrastinate, you'll be like, I'll do this tomorrow. And somehow you're already piling up so much work for tomorrow that is even yet to come. So you know that if your purpose for studying is to have an A or a 100 by the end of the semester, you know that um, you have so much work on your hands to do, not even to be compared to any student who is convenient with just having any other average grade. Once the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is inevitable. So if you don't know why you are doing this particular thing, it's very easy for lazy to set in. So guys, set your purpose right. Just make them plain, don't make them complex. They could be long term, they could, they could be short term. The second on our list is planning. He who fails to plan, plans to fail. Gosh, that saying is so true, guys. It's so true. I mean, planning has to do with all of your intentionality. You have to intentionally craft out a structured study plan. When I say study plan, I mean something that works for you. Please don't go and copy someone else's own. It might work for you, but in most cases, it doesn't work because, I mean, you guys are two different people. You both have your strengths, you both have your capacities, you both have different schedules. So just look out for something that works for you. And this is where the place of a timetable comes in. Yeah, a timetable will help you to know that, okay, this is what I'm supposed to study by this time. This time I'm supposed to rest, I'm supposed to do this. So talking about rest, please do well to take breaks in between. Once you feel saturated, take breaks. It's very important for your brain cells because you will be able to assimilate faster and even easier with a clearer mind. And your timetables should be flexible. I mean, um, flexible in the sense that if your schedule needs an adjustment or there is a change in your schedule, you could just adjust your timetable to fit into your schedule for the day. Anything could come up, but that shouldn't give room for procrastination, guys. While planning, you should be able to break down larger topics into smaller segments so that you'll be able to cover them with ease. And planning also helps you to manage your time effectively. Time management is something else because you don't have all day right. And it also helps you to reduce stress. Last on our list is to practice, practice active recall. Guys, practicing active recall has to do with you being able to recollect or recall all you've been able to study. This is different from memorizing or cramming, you know, it's far different from it. And for you to be able to actively recall, you must have studied and understood in your own terms, guys. Not necessarily in direct words that were used in the textbook or lecture slides. So to achieve this, you, while studying, you should be able to jot down key points. Yes, it's very necessary. Key points are necessary. Then you use flashcards or sticky notes. There's something the brain does. It's able to 
capture those attractive stuff more than those boring fonts on the textbooks or lecture slides because these flashcards or sticky notes are more they are catchy so the brain captures it and then take online quizzes and tests please don't shy away from it it helps you even if you don't do well the answers are there for you you have you go back again and you take them again and then you see how far you've come with studying guys these things work and it works like magic even though it's not magic and i'll just put this out there it's not easy it's really not easy but guess what it's very possible because i've tried it it's working and there are many other people that are trying it and it's working so yes i'll keep rooting for you thank you for staying to the end of this video i'll see you at the top because of course i want the best for you so till i come your way next time i remain cool and chill Stay curious and keep learning. Don't forget to subscribe, share a link with your friends too. Thank you. Bye.